President al-Assad expresses appreciation for Russia's stance which supports Syria's struggle against takfiri terrorism. Al-Jafari stresses that the conclusions drawn by UN investigation team did not add anything new to what Syria has already referred to. A number of Al-Nusra dens in different Syrian cities and towns were destroyed by our armed forces. Welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad has expressed his appreciation and the appreciation of the Syrian people for Russia's stand in support of Syria in the face of the ferocious assault and the takfiri terrorism it is exposed to. During his meeting with Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov, the president affirmed that such stands give us hope that a new map for world balance will be drawn. Earlier, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov has said his country has called on its Western partners not to lay obstacles and to work within the framework of the Russian-American agreement. The Russian official said Moscow has received from Syria evidence indicating the opposition's use of chemical weapons in Syria and started studying such evidence. The testimonies, he added, indicate the involvement of the opposition's fighters in the chemical attack. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has said that the Syrian government is currently considering all the points that occurred in the non-final report issued by the UN General Secretariat in connection with the use of chemical weapons in Damascus suburbs on the 21st of last August. Delivering Syria's statement during a General Assembly session held to hear the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's sta statement on the report submitted by the UN mission investigating the incident which allegedly took place in Al Ghouta area, Jafari pointed out that the Syrian government does not want to judge the findings of the report before carefully studying its details. He added that the conclusions reached by the UN team about the use of the poisonous sarin gas did not add anything new to what that the Syrian government has warned against, namely the danger of the Qaeda-linked terrorist use of chemical weapons in Syria. He said that stirring up the so-called chemical weapons in Syria file aims at undermining the chance of the Convention and the success of the Geneva II conference supported by the UN Secretary General in favor of the option of aggression. Ajafari stressed that the Syrian government is ready to commit itself to cooperation with the organization of the prohibition of chemical weapons in implementing the provisions of the agreement, adding that it is also ready to unveil to the organization all the chemical stockpiles and their crude components, as well as their production and storage sites. Addressing the UN General Assembly, Russia's permanent representative to the UN, Vitaly Chorkin, said Russia believes in the need of carefully considering evidence about the possibility for the chemical attack which took place in Al Ghouta to be a provocation. He referred to several clues that confirm that the chemical attack in Al Ghouta was a provocation on a wide scale in order to trigger foreign military intervention in the crisis. On the West draft resolution on chemical weapons in Syria, Chorkin said, I have no initial reaction, but we have submitted a very important proposal which we hope it would be implemented without intervention. Given the report when the consultations 
Russian Foreign Ministry spokesman Alexander Lukashevich has described as inappropriate blaming the Syrian government for the use of chemical weapons in Syria without evidence. He added that Russia asserts the involvement of the armed gangs in the use of chemical weapons on the basis of the facts that have been collected. Among such evidence, Lukashevich added, are the words of the chief nun of Mar Jacob Monastery, Mother Agnes, the testimonies of Western journalists who were liberated from captivity after being held by Qaeda-linked terrorists, and the message of former senior officials addressed to President Obama that they doubted the regime in Syria was the one that used the chemical weapons, as well as the result of the Russian experts' investigation into Khan al-Assal incident, which was referred to the UN Security Council. In a telephone conversation between the Russian and Chinese foreign ministers, Mr. Sergei Lavrov and Mr. Wang Yi, the two countries reiterated their stand to settle the crisis in Syria through political means without foreign intervention. The two ministers, the Russian foreign ministry said, stressed the identical stands of Russia and China and welcomed Syria's joining the Chemical Weapons Prohibition Treaty. They also voiced their support for the implementation of the Russian-American agreement reached in Geneva as soon as possible. The Chinese foreign minister is due to visit the USA tomorrow to meet his American counterpart and will take part in the UN General Assembly's sessions in New York. The UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon reiterated that the political solution is the only way to solve the crisis in Syria, rejecting any military intervention in the country. He pointed out that he will meet Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, the US Secretary of State John Kerry, and UN envoy to Syria, Lakhdar Ibrahimi, on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly meeting to discuss settlement to the crisis in Syria politically. At a press conference, Ki-moon welcomed Syria joining to the Convention of Chemical Weapons, appreciating the U.S.-Russian agreement regarding dealing with chemical weapons in Syria. He hoped the U.N. Security Council would be unified to deal with the pending issues, particularly the crisis in Syria, pointing out that there is no more time to waste. Deputy Foreign Minister Dr. Faisal al-Maqdad is scheduled to deliver Syria's word before the UN General Assembly on the 30th of September. A variety of topics will be discussed during the 68th session of the UN General Assembly, including peacekeeping, avoiding conflict, environment protection, and maintaining international law. World governments will meet and discuss political issues as well. Welcome back. Our armed forces destroyed a den for terrorists affiliated with Al Nusra Front in Khan al Sheikh farms in Damascus countryside and inflicted heavy losses upon them, killing their leader, terrorist Muhammad Ala Din, nicknamed Abu Bahir. Syrian Arab army restored security and stability into the town of Shab'a in Damascus countryside following a qualitative and quick operation that resulted in destroying the last gatherings and hideouts of the terrorists there. A military source said that during the operation large numbers of the terrorists were killed, including the leader of an armed terrorist group. The operation also resulted in destroying large quantities of weapons and ammunition, as well as a car equipped with developed satellite communication devices. Syrian Arab Army also found a 500-meter trench along the road of Damascus International Airport was used by the terrorists to hide and to fire their sniper shots into the passing cars. Another 200-meter long tunnel was found, being of one meter wide and more than one meter height in the town of Shaba, and it was equipped with ventilation and electricity and was used by the terrorists to store their weapons. A unit of the Syrian Arab Army also defused landmine and 21 explosive devices that their weights ranged between 50 and 70 kilograms planted on the outskirts of the city before being killed. Our armed forces destroyed today an anti-aircraft artillery and heavy machine guns during an operation in Daraa countryside. Army units foiled an attempt to detonate two explosive devices along Damascus Daraa highway. The army targeted terrorist hideouts in Al Hirak, killing five of them, as other terrorists were also killed in Sheikh Miskin area. The army foiled attempts by other terrorist groups to attack army barricades in seven villages. 
An army unit carried out an operation against Jabhat al-Nusra terrorist gathering in the village of Kafarnabuda in al ghab area, Hama countryside. The army destroyed terrorist machine guns, weapons and ammunition inside the gathering, killing a number of terrorists, among them Muhammad Yaman al-Muharibi and Omar Khalid al-Mash'an from Jordan. Syrian Arab army restored security and stability into Al Hamra and several nearby villages in Al Salamiya countryside of Hama after killing many terrorists from Al Nusra Front and the so called Islamic State of Iraq and Al Sham. A military source said that units of the Syrian Arab army succeeded in eliminating large numbers of the terrorists from Al Nusra Front, destroying their weapons and ammunition and defusing explosive devices that they had planted in the villages, in addition to seizing large quantities of weapons and wireless communication communication devices. In Aleppo, four citizens were killed and several others injured in a terrorist attack by a rocket on the residential street of Al Barun at noon today. Meanwhile, Syrian Arab army units destroyed today rocket launchers, motor guns, several weapons and ammunition that were carried by the terrorist vehicles which were coming from Turkey into villages and towns in Aleppo countryside, killing many terrorists and injuring several others. A military source said that units of Syrian Arab army eliminated terrorist gatherings in Khan al-Asal and destroyed their weapons and ammunition, while other Syrian Arab army units destroyed three rocket launchers and motor guns in three sites, killing all terrorists at the place. The source added that several cars loaded with weapons and ammunition were also destroyed in the southeastern countryside of Aleppo. Also in northern Aleppo and Il Anqarin in the eastern countryside of the city, killing many terrorists and injuring others. The source pointed out that a unit of the valiant Syrian Arab army foiled an attempt by the terrorists to infiltrate from Ar Rasafa into the secure areas in Al Ramun as another unit clashed with an armed terrorist group which tried to attack Al Kindi Hospital. Also, Syrian Arab Army unit eliminated an armed terrorist group that had tried to infiltrate from the area of Al Sayyid into the old city of Aleppo. Finally, army units destroyed weapons warehouse and killed numbers of terrorists in Deir Zor. A unit of the armed forces destroyed terrorist weapons and ammunition warehouse near Burhan al-Din Haji School in al Arfi neighborhood in Deir Zor city, killing all the terrorists inside it. Another army unit eliminated armed terrorist groups in al Amriaye village in Deir Zor countryside and destroyed their weapons and ammunition. Meanwhile, clashes erupted between two terrorist groups affiliated with the so-called Islamic State in Iraq. Iraq and the Levant, killing and wounding dozens of them. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this program again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business of market news with Vani Gunjian, but after a short break.